Valence Cell started with the idea that people want to know if they're improving or not. Are they plateauing? Are they improving? Are they declining? But to generate that information is painful. I mean, you would have to you know, wear a chest strap during exercise, take the numbers down, see how your heart changed with your activity, all this other kind of stuff. And, and it was, it was going to be too painful to get that information. And if you go to the doctor, right, it's a one spot check that gives you no information about how you were doing before. As a matter of fact, a lot of times doctors say, hey, uh, I wish I had a history of what was going on because I, can, I can't predict off just one measurement here in the, in the, in the lab. So the, the idea was that people, if we could track people, their biometrics, so their, their heart rate, maybe some other parameters, in context of their activity metrics, so their, their step rate, their speed, whatever they were doing, and saw how those changed with what they were doing, we knew we could tell we could do analysis on that and provide some interesting insights as to maybe you're fine. Maybe you don't need to exercise more. You're all right. Or maybe you really need to exercise more. Or maybe you're exercising too much. Or maybe you're eating the wrong things. All these things we could figure out we knew. So that the, all these eyes, as I call it, the big face, the big picture of what we were going to do was give people information they needed to achieve their health and fitness goals with devices they already wear. Now, the way it got implemented first is sports and fitness because, you know, it's a natural use case. I'm running, listening to music anyway. I need to know my heart rate zones. So that's how it's been implemented first. First, let me say what is similar about our technology to other technologies. So the idea of using light to measure blood flow has been around for a really long time. As a matter of fact, the first records I've seen of it is in the 1800s where people would take bulbs and flash them by their hand and then see the blood flow, you know, from the other side of the light to see what was going on and they would characterize like arthritic conditions and things like this. Time went forward and then there was a development of a technology called pulse oximetry. And you see this in hospitals today. You see people wear these finger clips, for example, in the hospital. It's shining light. It's seeing how the blood's flowing. The problem was that technology didn't work outside of a hospital. It worked really well in a hospital where you're laying down and not moving, but as soon as you move, as soon as you run, suddenly it doesn't work anymore. So Valence Cell had to figure out how to make that technology work, that old, old, old technology work, that ancient technology, in fact, work in a consumer product in an open environment. That was the big challenge. So the way we differ from, from older light-based technologies is that we make it work when it needs to work outside of the hospital. It started with understanding that we needed to characterize the noise in the body. So the reason it didn't work outdoors or running or all these environments is all that motion and environmental artifacts on the device. Imagine now we're picking up light, right? So the sunlight is so much stronger than anything that we're shoving into the ear. So we had to figure out how to remove the sunlight. We had to figure out how to remove shadow noise. We had to figure out how to remove footstep noise, all of which are a thousand times higher than the small, tiny signal we're measuring in the body. And so we had to characterize all that noise and figure out how to remove it actively. And that's really where our secret sauce is at. It turns out there's two elements to make that work. One is the optomechanics, so getting the optics right for the body part, the ear, the arm, the wrist, getting that right. The second part is the signal extraction, how you remove that noise. 